Well, in this video, we're just going to discuss what Christianity will most likely be in the year 2120, 2120. What will Christianity be like? Of course, that's about 102 years from at the time that I'm making this video. And of course, before I start, as always, you know, don't forget to subscribe, share this video, like, check the description, you know, check out my ebooks that I've written. <clears throat> and, but as I'm saying, we're going to discuss what Christianity will be like, what we believe, what I believe Christianity will be like. And of course, leave in the comments what you think some of the changes will be. I believe Christianity will be a lot more benign than it is now. We're already seeing the stages of it with liberal Christianity. They're ignoring huge parts of their Bibles. Uh, you know, we see that already. One second, I'm sorry. I apologize for this. I just want to be more like, you know, a Bible thumper, you know, with the Bible. You know, like that. But well, at least I already have some Bibles out here already to passages that I want to read in a few moments. But, you know, there'll be, you know, liberal Christians, they try to ignore a lot, a large part. And conservative Christians do too. Now, I've already put, I already have verses out about, you know, whether or not Christians can eat shellfish and wear clothing, two different types of clothing. Obviously, they can. It's in the book of Acts. I've already did a video on it. And, you know, Atheist reads Bible verses. You know, they it, it specifically says they can eat this stuff. You know, it, there's a big difference to what what you think they can and can't do, and what they actually can. Because it's pretty clear that it's basically, you read Romans and you read some of these verses in the Bible, it's clear that now the punishment. You know, they're, they're under a new covenant. Christians are under a new covenant. They can now eat the food and drink the food. Now, it's their, their Bible will tell you still, you know, in Romans, the first chapter of Romans, I'm not going to read it, but it's the first chapter of Romans. And once you get to like verse 21, it, verse 17, verse 21, and further on, it really gets into it. You know, lying, adultery, and homosexuality, and all this stuff, all that stuff is worthy of death. Because it's telling you, the death penalty still applies, it's just now you're going to burn in hell. But that's part of what I want to discuss in this video is, you know, what will Christianity be like? Of course, that type of stuff is going to be ignored, you know. You're going to probably have more uh, acceptance of homosexuality, which is a good thing, but they're going to ignore the fact that their religion forbids it. <coughs> Sorry about that. I apologize. But, you know, they're going to ignore the horrible stuff. They're going to ignore the slavery and the rape, the fact that their Bible condone slavery. But that's the Old Testament. Well, the New Testament, Jesus didn't seem to have a problem with slavery either. But again, they'll ignore it. And 100 years from now, 102 years from now, there will be very few conservative Christians left. Most, it's going to be more benign, more of liberal brand of Christianity. There will still be some of these, probably, I'm sure there'll still be the sixth day, sixth day creationists and all that will still exist. But they will be like so far on the fringe that nobody's really going to even take them seriously anymore. And they probably don't want to believe that the only ones going to heaven. Well, all that's left, it's almost time for the end times. And I believe Islam, 100 years from now, will be far more benign. I believe they, they, I don't, I believe that you will not see too many terrorist attacks and stuff by these Muslims anymore. Uh, they're probably far more men, benign, far friendlier, and not as destructive. But again, we're talking about Christianity here, right? We're talking about Christianity. Now let's go through some verses and see why they're wrong for, you know, they, what, and, you know, what the Bible actually says. It, it's still all, you know, this Jesus still thinks the way he does. You know, let's face it. This Jesus is supposed to be God, so obviously he doesn't change. And the Bible is pretty clear he does. I want to read you two verses. One in the Old, one in the New, well, first the New Testament, then the Old Testament. Of course, if your God changed his mind once, what makes you think he won't change again? Maybe, you know, he'll change his mind again. And don't forget, your Jesus is one that brought up the concept of hell, you know, punishment for any tiniest little thing. You know, just basically lack of belief, even though you have no evidence. Because every religion uses the same evidence. My feelings, prophecies, experiences, pr answered prayers, and all this stuff. But let's go ahead. Hebrews 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And of course, uh, please bear with me while I try to find some of these verses. Because again, we have this in Numbers. 
Numbers, 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 numbers. Numbers, 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 numbers. I'm sorry about this, but this takes me a while to find these things. But I do know that it's in Numbers 23, I believe. You'll hear it. It's numbers chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of Man that he should should repent that he hath said. And shall he not do it? And it was spoken, and shall not make it good. Basically, it's telling you the same thing there. Is that he's the same. He doesn't repent, meaning he doesn't change his mind. He's the same, always. And there's a few other times he's going to say it in the Bible, which we're not going to bring up. And then, of course, you want to have these Christians, you know, all that stuff is parables. You know, certain things in the New Testament, you know, Genesis, all that stuff is parables. Of course, you know, Jesus repeats the Adam and Eve story, Noah, uh, Jonah and many others as if it really happened. Remember that he does that plenty of times. Of course, the liberal Christians ignore it. And I can guarantee in 2120, they won't even bat an eye about it. Because there'll be nobody ready to correct them. And where are we going to have about the all scripture? Sorry about this. It just takes a while to find them. I should have probably wrote them down before I started. But I've done these verses before. Where is it at? Darn it. Let me go ahead and pause this. Sorry. Apologize, but here it is. 2 Timothy, Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Right there, it's telling you that the entire Bible, you're supposed to read it. The entire thing. And most Christians don't do it. The conservative Christians are more honest about their religion, how vile it is. Just like Muslims. The more conservative Muslims are, more honest. And that's the thing I always find funny. I mentioned in another video how Antifa does not really like conservatives. They don't like people on the right. They call them all fascists. But they support Islam, Muslim, mu these Islam. I mean, what the hell? Weird, aren't they? But anyways, now let's talk about the vile thing, one of the most vile things that Christianity has brought. And and again, 100 years from now, they're probably not even going to be talking about hell. 100 years from now, I doubt there'll even be a mention of it. They'll probably be like, well, it's just a separation from God. It's just, you know, you not exist. Or they'll have something, some way to lighten it up and ignore what the Bible says about their hell. But here's Christianity in a nutshell, how it is, okay? I want to start with a story. This story, I, I, I've gotten it from another YouTube channel, which I could remember. If you know what YouTube channel this is from, please put it in the description. You don't need to put a, a link to the um, video, but at the channel at least. There are these three girls. They're playing outside their church. They go to church. Their parents take them to church, you know, Sunday school. After summer school, they're playing in the park, you know, outside the church. The church has a park. They're playing in it. Well, there's a groundskeeper. He goes, he's a member of the church. He sees these three little girls. He invites them in to, you know, help them out and stuff like that. You know, and, and as the weeks roll by, he starts, you know, grooming them for you know, some nasty stuff. Well, eventually he moves on to where he's messing with them, assaulting them. Of course, these poor girls get kind of messed up in the mind as they get older one of them is a teenager she goes out with some of her friends and starts drinking she passes out in the cold snow her friends think it's just it would be just hilarious just to leave her there you know and of course she ends up freezing to death and she dies now she has two friends left they hear about her death at this point they've moved away from each other you know but they're still teenagers getting you know into old adulthood and it's been like a little more than 10 years since this is incident with the groundskeeper. One of them is so distraught, you know, and her parents are telling you that girl's nasty, you know. That girl is horrible anyways, you know. It had to be a disgusting person. They have no idea what their daughter their daughter's been through. They just assume that this other one is bad. Which is how a lot of Christians work. But anyways, one of them, you know, ends up going into into her bathtub, fills the bathtub with water, slits her wrist, and then of course says, I'm sorry, whatever that other girl's name is, and then ends up drowning in the bathtub and of course bleeding to death. And then she's found by her parents in the bathtub, dead. The other girl also found a few months later, doesn't really know that these other two, I mean, 
the other two is dead. I mean, I'm sorry, that her this friend is dead. But you know, she's found months later in a garbage can. She's been beaten and sexually assaulted and dumped in a garbage can. Well, now you may be asking, what happened to the old man, the groundskeeper? Well, decades and decades upon decades pass after all this event. He's now in his 90s. He's retired. He, he, he retired with $1.4 million from his investments and everything. He, of course, now he's a member of the church. Now he's actually gotten saved as the Bible defines salvation. And he eventually admits to what he did to these three girls and the fact that he molested a bunch of other girls. Many of them have, you know, passed lately, you know, died. Well, he dies in his comfortable in his bed at the age of 94. He dies, then he's taken by Jesus and his angels to heaven because he asked for forgiveness, remember? Even though he destroyed a lot of lives because that's how Christianity works. These three girls are burning in hell for all of eternity and most of his other victims are burning in hell for all of eternity. That's Christianity right there. If you're a Christian, that's what you support. If you're a liberal Christian, that's what you support. 100 years from now, if you're a Christian, that's what you're supporting because that's what your religion says. And if you are watching this in year 2120, which is probably not happening, leave a comment. Let me know how accurate I was about your religion. Obviously, I won't be reading it because I'd be long dead, thankfully. But I say thankfully because it looks like we might be screwing this world up a little bit too much for you guys. Probably won't be a pleasant world for you guys. Sorry about that. If it was up to me, we would fix the environment, focus more on education and science and knowledge and less on this stuff and less on military and, you know, but that's not going to happen. Most people want to fight over stupid things, water, land and crap like that. They don't care about pollution because they think, and that's another part about religion, Jesus is coming soon. You know, most of these religions are trying to hasten their apocalypse, Islam and Christianity and Judaism. <coughs> so, you know, they're trying to hasten it. So they don't care about the future. So you guys 100 years from now, 102 years from now, sorry. And of course 1,000 years from now and further on, I think Christianity will eventually fade and disappear. But don't think for a moment that Christianity will not exist in 2120. It will. It's just going to be far more benign. You, it'll be even more liberal than what you see now. And even these conservative Christians would most likely be considered liberal a hundred years from now, two hundred years, I'm sorry, a hundred years ago, two hundred years ago, five hundred years ago, a thousand years ago. But leave in the comments what you think are going to be some of the changes that Christianity is going to make. Because remember, according to this Bible, we got it, the Christians are under a new covenant. Okay, and oh, oh yeah, that's not, yeah, well, let's, I'll get that in a second though. They're allowed to eat selfish and stuff like that and, we're too, and also the Old Testament makes it pretty clear that stuff was for Israel it says the Hebrew shall you shall as in Moses descendants it makes it so clear that you have to be a buffoon to keep telling Christians that well you eat selfish you wear those two food, clothing together that's not what it said that's not what it means to Christianity that's for Judaism to se separate them from everyone around them anyone with any intelligence can figure that out People who say this stuff to Christians are just saying it just to annoy them. And you can kind of turn them off to listening to you by saying it. Now, obviously the penalty for all the stuff that lying and all... I like how the penalty is the same for everything. It's stupid. And homosexuality. Like, who cares if, if two people love each other they're not met hurting anybody? Why do you even care what two people do? <clears throat> I just don't get that. And of course, Jesus was a liberal. Read this again, please. It says several times, you don't work, you don't eat. And Jesus was not anti-capitalist. I've heard people say that. No. That scene in the Bible where he overturns the ta tables is because they're doing it in the temple. He did not care if they're doing this stuff outside. He was upset that they did it in the temple. And then you say, well, they sold all their stuff and, and shared it among each other. That sounds like communism, right? It does. Well, remember this. It's Christians sharing with everybody. And no one is being forced to do it. You had that one couple that was, that was slaughtered because they lied about what they got. And they did not want to share everything. But they didn't have to share it to begin with. They could have just said, well, we want to keep our stuff. People would just look at them like, okay, 
But, you know, they would have been allowed to. That doesn't not have, does not happen in communism. Now I'm not now I like reading the Bible. I read it quite often because it's it's just interesting. It's nice mythology. And that's what it is. It's mythology. But I highly suggest that you really try to understand what Christianity really is if you're going to debate someone. And in 2021, 2120, I assure you that they're gonna be so far more liberal and ignoring everything. Even the concept of hell will be ignored. And that gloss over the slavery part where Jesus actually condone slavery several times. He uses parable of slavery to defend what he's trying to preach. And then I like the part in there, like Nora too, where he says, you know, prophet's not without honor in his own home. Of course, because the people in his home, people in his town know he's full of crap. That's why he had to go out. And you see that these days too, you know, people who want to preach stuff, they have to go out to an audience that people don't know them. People that do know them know they're full of crap. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy. Feel free to subscribe, feel free to like, share, you know, everything else. And, you know, I wish I could see, I would love to see what the world is like in 2120 or your 3,000 or 10,000, but that's not going to happen. It's sad, it's that part of life, that's how, how life works. You don't get to see the future. I just would love to see the world in 2120. I would be 146 years old. Wow. Almost 147, because I would actually turn 147 in 2120. 147 years old. Can you imagine how rotted I am in that grave? Right? If you're watching this in 2120, just think about how rotted I am while you're watching. I'm probably nothing but bones, probably a little bit of flesh, and my bones all nasty and gross. I hope I get cremated, but we'll see. But, oh. oh, well. Thanks for watching.